So I've done a couple of videos now on the Canon M6 Mark II, and I kind of wanted to follow up on that by sharing with you guys some of my favorite accessories that I've found for the camera. Now, none of the accessories that I'm gonna show here today are really exclusive to the M6 Mark II, um, but it just so happens that they all seem to work really well with it. You know, I also wanna show you that all of these products are per products that I purchased with my own money. You know, nobody's sending me stuff to review. I think as of this filming, I've got, uh, let me refresh that. Yeah, 494 subscribers. So the affiliate money is not really rolling in. You know, if you wanna be subscriber number 495, then uh, go ahead and hit subscribe. All right, so let's get into it. The reason this bag's been sitting here the whole time is this is actually the first accessory that I wanna talk about. This is the Air City Sling. Um, and I really like Air's products and I've been trying to get my hands on this one for a while. It had been sold out and now it seems to be in stock uh, regularly, but I really like Air's products, especially, you know, the ones they make out of this, like, is it like 1680 Cordura um, nylon exterior? It's, you know, very thick. It has like a lot of structure because of that. And I think that that's good for like some camera equipment because it'll kind of give you a little bit of protection without needing to put you know, any padding or anything like that in there, um, just because of the sort of the nature of the material. Let's go ahead and put this Canon uh, M6 Mark II in here just so you can see how it all fits. And we'll go ahead and zip that up. Now I've owned the Air Day Sling for uh, quite a while, and I, I really like this bag too, but you can see based on that sort of thin profile, there isn't room to put anything other than maybe like a compact point and shoot, like an RX100 or something like that, because it's, it has this sort of narrow profile. Contrasted with the city sling, you know, there's room where you can fit a camera and a lens and then like some other accessories around the side. Um, also, the other reason why I really like this is how small it is. You know, let me go ahead and put this on here. You can see it really, you know, quite compact, spinning around on the back. So it's nice and small, which is, you know, kind of the perfect size for like this M6 Mark II and other, you know, probably an A6400 would fit in here great. Um, I also own the Peak Design 5 liter sling, a 5 liter everyday sling or something like that. And look, it's like a monster by comparison to this Air City sling. It's just way too big and when you wear it, it really feels like you have a lot of gear with you. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going full frame with a bunch of lenses, that's great. But, you know, obviously one of the great things about the M6 Mark II and other sort of small APS-C mirrorless systems is this nice and compact. So having a nice compact bag in order to carry it with is I think a really valuable thing or something that, that is important to me. All right, so let's take a look at what I have packed out into the Air City Sling. Now, I actually have all of the other accessories that I wanna share with you today packed out in here. Um, I probably wouldn't carry all of those accessories with me. You'll see as we get into them um, day to day, but I just wanted to kinda, you know, keep with the theme of this video and have everything in this nice, small, compact package. Um, if we open it up, you know, I already showed you I got the M6 Mark II. It has the 32 millimeter EFM lens. It's like my favorite lens. This thing stays pretty much glued to the M6 Mark II. And then I also have the 11 to 22 EFM uh, sort of wide angle lens in there as well. And really if I was going out for the day, these are probably the only two lenses that I take with me. I like to shoot, you know, kind of wide and get a lot of my environment into my pictures. And then this is great for, you know, some portraiture or if like it gets later in the day and you need some low light work with the uh, the 1.4 aperture on this 32 millimeter. All right, moving along, uh, let's go ahead and start by looking at what I actually have attached to the camera here. This is uh, a wrist strap made by Gordy's Camera Straps. It's a leather wrist strap. This is the regular size in a dark brown. Um, and then it's got a light brown wrapping cord. There's like tons of different configuration options, you know, different color leathers, uh, different color wrapping cords. Um, also different sizes, and then they also make neck straps and stuff like that. And it's, you know, pretty reasonably priced. I think this was like $20 plus maybe $3 shipping. There's a, kind of like a Tumblr blog that has pictures of all the different configurations options or people posting pictures of their camera with different colors and stuff that you can kind of use to uh, decide what colors you'd like. I'll post a link to that down in the description below. But yeah, Gordy's Camera Straps definitely recommend something like this. So flipping over to the bottom of the camera, you can see that I've got a um, plate here from Peak Design. And this is their plate that I think comes with like their capture products that allow you to kind of clip it to a backpack strap or um, I think it's also compatible with their new tripod that's coming out soon. Um, but what I really like about it is it's super low profile, as you can see there, and it's compatible with you know, just generic Arca Swiss mounts. I've kind of Arca Swiss all the things, all of my tripods uh, have like an Arca Swiss mount on it. 
you know, and you can see here's this like uh, Joby Gorilla Pod's got one on there, and you can just slide it in, tighten it down, and off you go. And what's really great about this, and this actually dispels, I saw some sort of negative comments about the M6 Mark II that, you know, you couldn't mount a plate onto the camera without blocking the battery door. If you look at this, because it sort of has this um, sliding slot here, if you slide it all the way over, then you do get battery door access and SD card access, no problem at all. So speaking of opening the battery door and getting access to the SD card, the next thing that I actually wanna talk about is the SD card itself, particularly UHS-2 SD cards. Now one feature that I really like about the M6 Mark II is that it can handle UHS-2 SD cards. Um, and basically that just means you get faster reads and faster write speeds. Now, one of the downsides to that is uh, these cards have been pretty expensive, but it seems like the prices are finally starting to come down. I'm shooting this kind of the week of Black Friday 2019, and this uh, 32 gigabyte 2000X Lexar card, UHS-2, it's actually down to like 35 bucks. Um, so that's a little bit cheaper than what I paid for it. But you know, the benefits to this is that it's gonna allow you to uh, clear your buffer faster. And since we're shooting 32 megapixel um, images with the M6 Mark II, those image files are bigger than what you would get on like a you know 24 megapixel image sensor. So being able to clear that buffer even faster using a USGS 2 card, definitely a benefit to have. Also, um, you know, the read speeds when you're transferring data or video to your computer, having uh, the faster read speeds is gonna be a really big benefit. Here I've kind of done a comparison um, between uh, the UHS-2 card plugged into a UHS-2 adapter, which by the way, uh, I have packed out in the bag, actually comes with uh, these Lexar cards. You get a UHS-2 reader that can read um, at those faster speeds. But I've gone ahead and done a um, read-write speed comparison test, uh, both using this UHS-2 reader and then plugging it directly into my USB dock that has just sort of a, a UHS-1 uh, card reader. And you can see with the card plugged into the UHS-2 reader that, that came with it, we're getting a write speed of about 165 megabytes per second. So that's quite a bit lower than the spec suggests, but still, you know, plenty, plenty fast, uh, you know, for the video bit rate that this thing shoots. Um, and then we're seeing a read speed of up to 250 megabytes per second. You know, contrast that by just plugging it into the regular UHS-1 card reader that I have in my USB dock here. You can see that the speeds drop dramatically. It's like 50 megabytes per second write, and maybe like 65 or 70 megabytes per second uh, or sorry, 50 megabytes per second write, and then maybe 65 or 70 megabytes per second um, read. So, you know, you're getting like, I don't know, three times faster on the write. And then for me, I think what's actually more important is you're getting like five times faster on the read because that's when, you know, you're trying to, at the end of the day, you're trying to transfer, you know, your images or your video files to your computer. And uh, having that extra speed, you know, really comes in handy. You're gonna get five times faster file transfers basically at that point. All right, so let's go ahead and set the camera aside for a second and see what else, what other accessories I have packed out in this Air City Sling bag. Um, looking up front here, uh, one of these things that I have is a 18 watt power delivery charger. And you can see how small this is. This is the Anchor uh, PowerPort 3 Nano. I'll, again, I'll put a link to the description down below. This was like, I think it was just on sale when I picked it up, it was like $16 or something like that. And when I did my why I upgraded video, uh, talking about why I upgraded from the Canon M50 to the M6 Mark II, you know, I really mentioned how I was excited about the USB-C and uh, kind of talked about how um, some of the early reviews were a little bit inaccurate. They, they kind of claimed that you could only charge the M6 Mark II with sort of a really expensive proprietary charger from Canon. And you know, one thing that I pointed out is there's a ton of like super cheap uh, power delivery chargers. Plus, you know, Canon includes the charger out of the box, so you don't have to have this, but but I think this is a nice accessory to add to the M6 Mark II, so you can, you know, you can charge on the go. All right, so open up the bag again. The last accessory that I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about is um, these spare batteries. Uh, now, I've been really impressed with the M6 Mark II's battery life. I rarely need to change a battery um, when I have the camera out shooting, but you know, I always like having a couple extra on me. Uh, I picked up this two pack um, made by Rav Power. I picked it up refurbished and it was like $12 for two batteries plus the uh, USB charger. And new, if you wanna go that route instead, I think it's like 
20 bucks or something like that um, for both plus the charger. You know, in my experience, it seems like these don't last quite as long as the uh, official Canon battery that came with the camera, but you know, definitely you're getting a couple hundred shots out of them. And the fact that I'm rarely even getting into these batteries anyway, uh, you know, means that I'm not actually that worried, uh, you know, if they don't perform quite as well as the Canon. So that's pretty much it. That's all of the products I want to talk to you about. Again, these are all products that I purchased with my own money. I did put some affiliate links uh, to everything down in the description below, but you know, the amount of money that I get from affiliate links at this point is, it doesn't even really move the needle to be honest with you. Uh, it's Sunday night right now. Still got to go to work tomorrow morning. If you enjoyed the video, um, you know, hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you want. If you want to be that 495th subscriber, uh, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, I got a couple other interesting videos lined up. I'll be down in the comments, uh, answer any questions that you guys have. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.